Hello, my family. So, I actually came across of one of my subscribers, even, and I have subscribed to her channel, and that would be L&L Honeycomb. Now, L&L Honeycomb is starting a spice train challenge, um, and what that is, is basically she's taking garlic and she's taking onions, she's dehydrating them and turning them into seasonings. There are several ways you can do this. Uh, you can turn them into powder. You can literally um, take them and um, cut them in pieces and dehydrate them. And honestly, you can even take, like the green onions, take and put them in pieces like you would chives, and you could freeze these. I literally have some old green onions that I need to do something with them. So I am actually going to take you out there with me. Um, you'll have to forgive the sawing noise as Mr. James, the hillbilly bee man, is actually making some queen boxes for rearing his own queens later. So he's actually working outdoors too. We're working in between the rain, so I am fixing to go harvest all of those green onions. I need to do a reset on them as well, start that over and let them replenish. So I'm gonna make use of that. Uh, I can actually this year dehydrate some of them. I'm currently right now dehydrating rose petals. The benefits to rose petals would be um, vitamins, minerals, antibacterial, um, it's good for the inside of your body, it, it helps cleanse, uh, it helps uh, hydrate your body, and can tend to help with weight loss. I'm not using it for that, I'm using it for the skin, which you can make rose water with it, spray it, mist it, hydrate your skin, but that only lasts in the refrigerator for about a week. I can dehydrate my rose petals and make tea when I need it. You can even make a potpourri out of it if you wanted to. So I am going to be waiting until the rose petals are done, but currently I'm going to go pick the green onions because some of them I can actually chop and freeze. Some of them I can actually put them in my fridge and wait. I'll be chopping them up, waiting, and then putting them in the dehydrator to dehydrate, and I could turn them into green powder, uh, green onion powder, or Again, I could just dehydrate the green onion pieces and I can add them to my dishes, whether it be soup, stews, roast, anything that will rehydrate them again, or I can actually put them in water, rehydrate them, and add them to my eggs. So there are benefits to be able to save what I am actually getting out of control of, restart my growth in them, getting fresh and removing the old and still be able to use it. So, without further ado, let's go outside and do some harvesting. Okay, this is the anise hyssop. I actually have two sections of this one. I make tea out of this as well. I have done picked off of this stock, uh, this and that other one down um, by the spinach twice now. I have dehydrated these and I have anise hyssop for tea. I am preparing for teas throughout the winter. So this is amazing. This would be mullen. This is the one I call the respiratory plant. These fuzzy leaves right here, I am getting ready to take the outer edges of this. I will be washing these really good and then I will be drying them. Once these are dried, they will be stored in my pantry and this is, will help for anything with cold, flu, any uh, respiratory infections that you may have it helps break up mucus amazing plant so I it's almost time for me to go ahead and start harvesting that one as well okay so these are those green onions I said I need to redo I have so many of them I need to do something with these and I do not want this to go to waste so some of them started to produce little flowers, so I'm going to cut them down to their base and let them replenish because they will come back. I have these over here and those over there, so I have plenty of onions to work with. And I will set you up while I harvest these and show you what we're going to do with them next. Okay, so these look absolutely beautiful right now, but honestly they need to be replenished. So. I'm actually going to sit here and harvest each and every one of these. I need to clean this bedding out so that I have a new stock 
of fresh green onions and keep them going. So what I'm going to do is about an inch from the bottom, I'm going to pull the whole thing off just like that. And I'm going to lay these in my basket because these are going indoors. Again, I'm just going to bring these up. Cut them about an inch from their base. And this will give me all new stocks in this. And should they not, then I will just, I mean, I've got plenty enough and I can always put more in here to grow. So, these are about the easiest things I've ever seen to grow. So, they're no issue. And thanks to L&L Honeycomb, she gave me ideas that I completely forgot about, honestly. Um, and what to do with this with her spice challenge. So I'm actually grateful that I ran across her video on this. And it gives me more seasonings in my pantry and my freezer, basically. So I got to just clean this out to make sure I keep my babies going. It is this new season, and I have been literally working on this homestead since the seasons are starting getting better clearing out all of the winter's damage in everything so starting the new growing season giving everything that's been covered in mulch some air so we just keep doing this right now until I have my stocks done I just take the whole section right here and Give them all a trim down. Some of this stuff, I don't even know how it got in here. There's seeds of all kinds in the hair of weeds and stuff that grew in this place, including trees. And that's got to come from the birds or the squirrels. I'm even finding uh, pecan nuts in here. And honestly, I've been finding pecan nuts in my gardens where they're literally burying their nuts in my garden. Crazy. And it looks like I'm kind of depleting my whole entire stock right here. And in a sense of it, I am because I need it to replenish. So, and like I said, if it doesn't, there's so, so easy to regrow. I don't worry about it. I can always purchase a cheap pack of uh, green onions if I wanted to or even throw in some seeds. So, but I definitely got to get these done. And this is needed cleaned out, and she just and gave me the motivation to clean this out and replenish my stocks. I'm going to go ahead and finish the next two beds over yonder, and I will take you indoors and we'll finish this off, show you what I'm going to do next with these. Okay, so this was a huge harvest. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually going through pulling off the bad ones that I don't need. Um, I'm breaking these down to a point where I can literally fit them in this sink so that I could wash them before I chop them up. So I'm breaking them down into pieces, clearing off the tips of them, and making them sizable that I can work with. So this is our next step into cleaning off these onions. And, you know, I have to say... I'm actually proud of this. We had a really bad winter and it killed off a bunch of stuff. So I had to start over. These came back so quickly. A matter of fact, um, this weather confused them and some of them even went into flowering. So, and I didn't need that. I picked off the flowers, but they still went out of control. So these definitely needed to be replenished. And I'm just, I, I can't believe, I didn't think of this, but... L and L Honeycomb, thank you, darling, for giving me an idea, and I am joining your spice train challenge, and I am harvesting my onions, and whether they're dehydrated, frozen, or whatever, um, I'm still using my herb seasonings and making them useful instead of wasting. I'm learning this year not to waste anything, so I'm going to use 
everything possibly that I can, even in the weather's confusion, on what these things want to do. So they're not completely ruined. I can still use these in a great way, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and finish separating these, get these washed, and then we'll take you to the next step. Okay, y'all, so here is what we have. We have three categories. Is it worth going through all this? To me, yes, it is. Um, the uses that I can get out of these stocks is actually amazing, and this will show you exactly how much onions I had to restart. Now, these are my... I have some mature onions. Uh, I've actually literally had to cut the flowers off of them. So some of them were so mature, they're a little tough. So in this stack... These that are a little tougher, I will be cutting these down and actually turning this into green onion powder. They're perfect for that. Even though they're firm and big, these are perfect for powder. This stock that I have right here, these are mature, yet they are soft and they're a bit bigger. So these will make a perfect candidate to turn into slices and dehydrate for soups and stews and stuff like that. So that's what these will be is green onions dehydrated slices and now this stock is the younger stock of them the tips the younger shoots that came from it now these these will be frozen almost treated kind of like a chive I will be chopping these up freezing them and these would be great for salad toppings or dips or sauces and stuff like that so each one has a category each one will have its purpose and that's what I'm going to do with these stocks as far as my seasonings we will have my powders my dehydrated slices and my frozen for smaller things like I said dips sauces uh, so many different things salad toppings um, even on a potato if you wanted to um, just like a chive so we're going to go ahead and start these. I'm going to start with this first. After each category, I'm going to show you. Now, some of these are going to be refrigerated right now until my roses are done. But I will show you in the end of each category what I have, how much I'm going to have. And um, show you where this is going to go as to what we're going to have to put in our pantry. This is amazing. And I cannot wait to get started. I absolutely love this idea. So... Let me get to it. Okay, I'm going to start with the small ones first. And how I'm actually going to do this is I'm taking bunches like this. You can use scissors if you want. To me, this is so much easier. So I'm going to go through here making my cuts to make my small slices like this. And that is all. And then from there, I will be popping these inside of a freezer bag. So... This is all I'm going to do is just cut these up in my bunches in small pieces and then freezing them. As you see, I'm getting a whole bunch of this. Super easy, a lot quicker. Uh, I've tried the scissor method before. It just doesn't work for me. So a good sharp knife, a few bundles at a time, and I can get this job done. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off this bowl, get these frozen, and we'll show you how much actually we got off of this. I can see right now this is going to be quite a few quarts as I'm using the frozen quart bags. So I'm actually happy about this. This will be another herb used. Okay, y'all, so these are the green onion tops. I use the quart size bags, and I've got... Between both of these, I've got about a quart, um, a quart size full bag, but I divided these up of green onion tops, I'm calling them. So, in each category, I'm going to give you some examples and ideas. It will sound like, again, one of those bubble gum shrimp type of scenarios, but I'm going to give you several ideas which you can use for these tops. Again, these are like just slightly bigger than chives. So here are a few ideas you can use with these. One, if you make mashed potatoes, you can sprinkle these in there, even in low carb, y'all, with your cauliflower rice, mashed potatoes, 
sprinkle a few of these on top of it and they're, they're absolutely amazing same with baked potatoes for those who eat the baked potatoes sprinkle this on top and you have a nice flavoring on your potato mix you can use these for making um, you can use these to make <laughs> Sorry y'all, my husband started speaking to me and I lost track. So give me one moment while I tend to what he needs first. I apologize y'all. So to continue on, the other things that you can do is you can use these in cheese balls. These make ex unbelievably flavorful cheese balls by using just a little bit. Without having to use all those onions, add some color to your cheese balls. This works great. Another thing, I said salads. Okay, we're talking chicken salad, egg salad sandwiches, um, regular salad, sprinkle these on top. So these basically will fall in line to the more finer foods, basically, the smaller scales, your sandwiches, your tuna salad, things like this. So these work absolutely great if you wanna use a chai version of green onions. It still gives you an onion with a boost of coloring so these are finished now these will be frozen how do I use this I will take what I need break them up um, when I take them out of the freezer stick them in the dish let them defrost and I will add them to my dish they don't necessarily get really soggy even though these do have a water base to them so I, I've done this with chives before I'm going to actually see if that will work for these green onions. I think I've tried this before, to be honest with you, and it worked just great. So I do not mind using this. And even if it doesn't, I still get that flavor. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So these are going in the freezer. Ones I'm working on next will be the older, but not too old. These are the bigger stalks, the mature these were the ones that will be dehydrated. They will be stored in my refrigerator until my rose petals are done. These will have another uh, purpose for them. Once I get these chopped up, I will show you how I'm gonna do that. And then I will give you, just like the smaller version, I will give you the purpose for what these this size is for. Oh, to give you a few other things, I just keep, it will give you a random idea, basically. Uh, another thing I thought of for the smaller grades is you can add them to your scrambled eggs or your eggs in your mor in the morning or your casseroles, so, and yeah, or, or your omelets and things like that. So the list can go on. This gives you a lot of reasons to use those smaller tops, the smaller versions, and this is going to be the next set to show you. Now, they won't have as many in a purpose as the smaller ones will but they will still have their purpose in ones that you can use this a lot better now this one's a little bit firmer so i'll turn that into powder but these i'm not going to make them as small i'm actually going to make these slightly bigger just like i would use chopped onions so this is what i'm going to do with this i am going to make these slightly bigger pieces not as fine these will go even quicker than the other ones did and I'll show you an example if I can about how just pieces like that so I'm gonna finish this and then I will bag these up and show you what I'm gonna do with those okay y'all so I did just finish chopping all of my onions now these here are the bits and pieces this is the more tougher um, side of the onion so these will make perfect onion powder uh, how I plan on doing that is drying these completely dry then I will add this to a coffee grinder and powderize this I have to tell you a quick funny with uh, the hillbilly bee man of mine <clears throat> you know I gotta love that man he he can be my my honey can be really funny sometimes so he started munching on these because he loves green onions. What he didn't know is when he was cut, or munching on this type, which is a bit older, mature, and tougher, he started telling me, he said, you know, these are a bit tough, and I couldn't help but laugh at them because I knew what I was going to use these for, and I said, and that's the reason why those are dehydrated going for powder. So <laughs> I kind of got a chuckle out of him. 
so what I'm going to do with this is once these are powdered, this will be used just like I would onion powder. Now these will be more of a green powdered side, but still nonetheless, green onion powder is onion powder no matter what. So I will not be wasting this. These will be put to use as well, and this will use as a seasoning and herb. These are the chopped onions that will be dehydrated. Now I did this in two versions because I have so many of these. This will break down to, I'm going to give a rough guess to about a pint of dehydrated sliced onions. So I also did some that I'm going to freeze. So these will be frozen. If I want something that's not so dehydrated, <clears throat> be able to use a chopped onion immediately and have it in a green form. But this, <clears throat> the idea is that I will tell you how to use these. Once they are dehydrated, they will need a liquid base to rehydrate. So here is some of the suggestions to use with dehydrated green onions. Sauces, anything that has a liquid base, soup, sauce, um, casseroles, anything that would, uh, how about um, potatoes au gratin, which we can do that in a low carb, replacing the potatoes with turnips. So anything that has a sauce, you can reuse these, uh, rehydrate them. Uh, you can use this for marinades, uh, anything like that. So this will serve a purpose. So now we have three resources of onions. We have a powder form. We have dehydrated form. And we have frozen forms. And this is a huge stock. Plus, I will still be able to have fresh while all three of those beds regrow. I will still have fresh, but in the meantime, I have a never-ending supply of onions in three different versions that can be used. So this goes towards prepping for my pantry on top of doing the challenge for the Spice Train Challenge from l and Honeycomb. Um, this was a fantastic idea, and I... I am not sorry I did this. I needed to have an idea what to do with all those onions. I have still all the ones that we grew in the house out there. They are very new, and I could use those for fresh because they are still quite small. So this is what we did with our challenge. Um, leave your comments below and let me know ideas that you would have for each section that I have done. And maybe you can share something I might have missed. So I hope you enjoyed this part of our video. I hope you enjoyed this challenge that I decided to take as well. And you all have a blessed day. Much love to you from Parton's Heritage Homestead.